seen my pants? They're also very important. These shards have a powerful partial consciousness that has been harnessed by gems throughout history. I barely even know what that means. How do you expect Steven to? If you see it, bring it to me. How did Pearl not see or hear that? I know it's really going to seem like I'm nitpicking here, but this door is opening the wrong way in this shot. It's supposed to open the other way, according to Gem Glow and Cheeseburger Backpack. That's unusual! I don't know why, but I really love this line. We used to be friends! I don't think I even want to know the implications of being friends with your pants. A close-up of Steven's ass is not exactly what we needed to see today. Where's your face, Frybo? This line included, it feels like Mr. Fryman sees PD more as Frybo than he sees him as his own son, and that's never really addressed. It's kind of fucked in a way. The resolution doesn't exactly match the conflict. When I told my dad I wanted to be part of the Fryman family business, I didn't think it meant being stuck in a sweaty old costume. Things used to be different, Stephen. Nothing to worry about back then except making myself dizzy on the old seahorse ride at Funland. Oh, Frybo, you're hilarious! Wow, Stephen's an asshole here. Character sabotage much? The puddles already looked kind of weird in the previous shots, but with Frybo rolling over them in this shot, they look more like pools of ice than they do water puddles. I feel like there's just no point to it, you know what I mean? I just feel tingly! I'm sure the crew universe meant for this dynamic to be one of those this character is the other character's foil type of things. But the way Steven is acting here is so out of character that it honestly feels like they wrote him as some uncaring dumbass just to try and fit that trope. I protect humanity from magic and monsters and stuff! I mean a real job that you get paid for. I'm fairly certain that a job is not defined purely by something you get paid to do. A job is just a role that somebody fills, so saying saving the world isn't a real job is a bit dickish. The end of this handle is colored the same as Steven's fingers in this shot. You work away your life, and what does it get you? You get cash. Cash that can't buy back what the job takes. Not if you rode every seahorse in the world. What a great message you're sharing there. Hey kids, if you go out and do what literally everybody does to get money to survive, you're gonna be miserable! I'm not saying that you have to make the topic look like all sunshine and rainbows, but surely going at it with a more level-headed approach instead of something as black and white as cynicism versus optimism would have been more appropriate. Why would you stop and turn around when you know there's a monster in there? The truth is, you're a valued member of Fryman Brothers Incorporated and all its affiliates! That's a terrible way to put it. PD should not take that as some kind of emotional confession. You mash your potatoes! Didn't you hear what I said about the living armor and infantries and many, many deaths? Did you really expect him to? Magically growing spear. When Pearl first showed up, she was in front of this table. But now in this shot, she's behind the table. So if this thing controls garments like clothes and stuff, and since clothes don't exactly have nerves or tissue or blood cells or anything like that, why would these shards have any idea of what it means to bleed, let alone be able to surmise that ketchup could serve as a substitute for that? This just feels like shock value for shock value's sake. Also, Pearl just kind of gawks at the ketchup coming at her instead of, oh, I don't know, dodging it? Ketchup! It's everywhere! I can't see! Just wipe your eyes! How is this mascot costume able to close its eyes? I've always hated you! Wait, you've always hated Frybo? You're more concerned over the fact that your son hates a mascot costume than the fact that the mascot costume in question is trying to attack him? According to this fight scene, there are eight shards possessing Steven's clothing. Two for his socks, two for his boots, one for his pants, his shirt, his coat, and then his underwear. But earlier in the episode, Pearl mentions that there are only eight shards, which means there should actually only be seven pieces of clothing since one of them is already in Frybo. That shard looks nothing like it did when Steven first found it. As soon as I bared my butt, I knew he'd crack. No. I'm assuming it's now a little while later since it's nighttime, so why hasn't Pearl insisted that the other shards get bubbled yet? Why is she still allowing them to possess the other clothing when she made it very clear earlier that doing so for prolonged periods of time is dangerous? Speaking of which, why haven't these shards turned against Steven and everyone else yet? I'd assume the shards have been in those articles of clothing for a while now. What's the holdup? You were great, Frybo. Kids today just didn't understand. Weren't people scared of it before he attacked them? Pearl would be good at cinema sins. 
as greasy in death as he was in life. He was never alive to begin with. Unless you count the gem shard stuff, which I don't. I think our work here is done. Put your clothes on, Steven. Good grief, he's naked!